Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up AMP on your WordPress website. Now, I'm gonna assume that you have some idea of what AMP is, but just in case you don't, AMP stands for Accelerated Mobile Pages, and it is an open source framework that Google originally developed with a goal of making mobile pages faster, okay? So it's, it's uh, taking HTML, and a big part that you'll see uh, in this video is uh, stripping out the JavaScript functionality from those pages to make it load faster. It's not That's not the only thing that it does, but uh, that's a big part of it. So um, anyway, if you want to enable AMP on your WordPress website, let's go ahead and hop on into the tutorial and I'll walk you through it. So we're gonna be working with this website that I'm running on a Cloudways server. Uh, right now there is just this home page. We have a uh, WordPress security blog post um, and that's about all that we have going on right now. Um, let's go into the WordPress admin dashboard and go to our plugins and add the official AMP plugin. So we'll search for that. And the one that you want is the official one by AMP project contributors. So we'll install that simply just named AMP. And when that's done, we can activate it. And there we go. We have that on our WordPress website. So if you go to settings here, um, you can execute this wizard, this wizard uh, which will walk you through the setup process. So I recommend that you do that. It gives you a little bit more background about AMP and how it's gonna integrate with WordPress. So click on next. Um, I am going to go with the developer or tech savvy option because it gives you a little bit more options when you're actually interacting with the plugin. If you ch choose this, there's a simpler user interface. Um, you have three different template modes, standard, transitional, and reader. So the standard mode here is if your entire website is going to be AMP, including desktop and mobile, um, which is usually not the case. Uh, it can be in some cases, though. Um, there's also the transitional option, which allows you to have, you know, an AMP version for mobile and a non-AMP version maybe for desktop. Uh, but you will use the same theme either way. And then you have the reader option, which as it says here, your site will have a non-AMP and an AMP version and each will use its own theme. So I want the theme to be consistent across them. So uh, just like it says, it recommends the transitional theme. So we'll go with that one for uh, our website. So we'll click on next and it's just reviewing. We picked transitional. Here's our theme 2021, which is known to be uh, AMP compatible. And then uh, we'll have the option that this should be enabled, redirect mobile visitors to AMP. So anytime somebody comes to your website from a phone, from a tablet, any mobile device, it'll they will be redirected to your AMP website. And uh, we'll hit that, finish, save. Okay, there we go. We got all of our settings configured. Um, there's your checkbox to say, do we want to redirect mobile visitors to AMP? And what does that actually mean? So when when a user goes to your one of your web pages on their, let's say their cell phone, right? they're gonna be redirected to this page. Um, I'm sorry, they're gonna be redirected to the page that they want to go to. And then there's gonna be a question mark and an AMP equals one tacked onto the end of the URL. And that's what's gonna distinguish the fact that they are using an AMP page. Um, there's other ways to indicate that, uh, but the, the default and probably the recommended one is to do a uh, question mark AMP equals one. Um, Okay, so let's go ahead and look at our website. So let's go back here. Uh, website looks the same, right? That's because we're not looking at the AMP version of the website. So if we wanna look at the AMP version of the website, well, we can explicitly do it up here and click on view AMP version. And as you can tell, there is not a big difference here. Um, same thing here, we got the green check mark. That means we're looking at the AMP version. Um, but what I wanna show you, uh, I wanna not view the AMP version, whoops, sorry about that. I wanna not view the AMP version, so view nom AMP version. Um, and I'm just gonna strip this off the URL just to keep it clean. So we're looking at our WordPress security blog post, but what I'm gonna do is open up an emulator to look at this web page in a Moto 4G uh, cell phone, right? So I'm gonna refresh the page and you'll notice we're going to explicitly go to the URL slash WordPress security, but will be redirected to the question mark AMP equals one page. So let's go ahead and do that. And you'll see that it does indeed redirect us to the question mark AMP equals one page. Now, 
Uh, let's get out of this and I want to show you the page source and how it differs from a traditional HTML page. So we'll do a search here for AMP HTML and you'll see 169 occurrences of that tag uh, just or that reference throughout our web page here. Um, and that is an indicator that we are again indeed on an AMP page. Um, if we look at the non-AMP version, I did it again. <laughs> if you look at the non-AMP version of the website, um, and again, I'm just going to strip that off for uh, simplicity's sake. Uh, if we look at the page source here and we look for that AMP HTML, we do see the references, but that's only because we have the WordPress admin uh, dash bar at the top. Um, and there, in this case, there's only two references. So we're definitely not uh, on an AMP page at this point. Okay, so, th so that's cool. Uh, the other feature is that you can do paired browsing. So you can see a side-by-side -side comparison. This is what you're non-AMP version of your website looks like, and this is what your AMP version of your website looks like. So if there is any functionality difference or formatting difference or anything like that, you can visually see that happening uh, in a side-by-side -side manner. I really like this feature of the, the AMP plugin. It gives you, it lets you grasp, grasp uh, uh, the concept of AMP, and if there's anything breaking it, um, you'll be able to see that right away. Now, with that being said, Let's go ahead and add some functionality, specifically a plugin that is not AMP compatible, and see how that changes things. So um, let's get out of here. Uh, actually, we'll just go back into the dashboard, and I think that'll kick us out. Yep. So we can exit out of the paired browsing. And uh, I have here another plugin that I've installed, but I haven't activated, Contact Form 7. This uses JavaScript, so this is going to... Um, uh, be not AMP compatible because of that. And it'll tell us right away that, that, that that's the case. So if you look at our AMP section down here, um, actually we have to validate the URL first. So let's go to the contact page. And this is just the non-AMP version of the contact page, right? Um, uh, and I think what's happening here is I explicitly told it before to not have this page be AMP compatible. And that is a thing which I want to show you anyway. So if you go to the actual contact page, hit edit, you'll see that you have the option to explicitly enable or disable AMP. So uh, from before I was disabling AMP on this page because I know it's not um, AMP compatible, but now let's enable it and see what happens. So we'll enable AMP and right away it says AMP is valid, but two issues need to be reviewed. So let's, re well, let's look at the page first live to see what it actually looks like. So we'll go to our website, go to slash contact, and you'll see that we have um, the AMP option up here, right? Because we have AMP enabled for this page. So we can view the AMP version. Uh, we get the, we don't get the green checkbox this time. We get the yellow exclamation point. And it says uh, there's two issues which we have unreviewed. It, it looks the same. Uh, but we need to go ahead and look at those issues uh, in here. So let's click on that link and it'll say specifically for the contact page, there is invalid an invalid inline script, which is of type JavaScript. Um, and there you can look at a little bit more detail about that. And then there's another one of type JavaScript, which is an index.js. Um, and the markup status says that it's removed. So that means that um, if you were to go to this page uh, and maybe try to submit a form on the contact form, it's not going to work because AMP is enabled and that disables the JavaScript. Um, so basically you want to, knowing that, knowing that's the case, testing it out, you want to disable AMP for that page explicitly. So that's what we were seeing back here. If you go to the actual page and you can do this post by post basis, page by page basis, um, we're going to explicitly disable AMP for this page so that uh, we can have the functionality of the contact form. So going back to that page again, the contact page slash contact, you'll see now that we don't even have the option to uh, preview the page as AMP because it's not AMP compatible. Uh, okay, so back here, I think that's most of what I wanted to show you. Um, some of these options, these two options, validated URLs and error index, these are only available if you do the tech savvy mode uh, for the plugin setup. And you can see here that uh, we have, um, uh, you can 
individually look at all of your pages, see what the valid, valid validity of those pages are. Um, so we look in the contact page, the WordPress security page. And uh, if I didn't show you this already, I wanna show you that you can um, validate the URL explicitly here. So you can click on validate URL and that will open up the page. We're looking at the home page here. And uh, because we do have the contact form installed, um, unfortunately, it adds JavaScript code to every single page, not just the JavaScript page. So that's why we see the AMP plugin taking care and removing the JavaScript options from the home page. So that way it's AMP compatible. Okay, so that's all I got for this video. I wanna thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you have questions in the comments below. Subscribe for more videos like this for me in the future. And if you do, I'll see you in the next one.